Well, Dr. Book is, um, before she became President Book, she was, a, well, she did lots of things before, but she was a professor in the School of Communications and actually hired me many, many, many years ago. Um, and so I thought, what a perfect opportunity to have someone who was an expert in media management to talk about the film industry. So we were lucky that President Book was available during class time. So I'm just going to turn the class over to her for a little bit. I actually have a lot more free time right now since my travel is, uh, is suspended. But I used to teach this class. And one of the things I really enjoyed teaching this class was uh, about telecom management, about how the industry makes money. And so today I thought, since you just watched the movie Tootsie, that I would talk a little bit about um, the way in which Columbia, which is the distributor of that film, the way that companies like Columbia uh, make money and introduce the concepts that I think were previously in one of your uh, assigned readings about vertical integration and horizontal integration. So this is a concept that you hear in the media all the time about uh, this company is vertically integrated or this company is horizontally integrated. So uh, I thought I would explain it really briefly and then I'm just gonna ask you a couple of questions based on your own media usage um, about your experience with horizontally and vertically integrated companies. So uh, the concept is on, if you think about uh, an X, Y axis, okay, a horizontal line, horizontally integrated companies, media companies, uh, what they do is they buy different types of distribution systems. So for example, let's use one that we, we all know, uh, NBC, the network, NBC. It's a great example of horizontal integration because do you know who the parent company, who owns NBC? Does anybody know? If you Comcast. go downtown New York, you see it. <laughs> Is it Comcast? That's right. So Comcast, great answer, Noah. <laughs> Comcast owns NBC. CC. All right. So, um, how many of you have Comcast as your cable provider? Just raise your hand. Okay, so Comcast is, is America's largest cable television provider. That means they actually own the cable uh, that go, comes into your house, all right? So they own that cable, and then they also own NBC Net Television Network, so another distribution system, cable, and then broadcast television, NBC. What else, does anybody know what else they own? NBC is also part of a family of con something else. So the other thing you see that Peacock often on, besides now Comcast and NBC, is Universal Pictures. So they own the film distribution, Universal Pictures. Does anybody have any, so Comcast, this parent company, owns a television network. They own a film uh, distributor. Any other things that you know Comcast owns? You'd be surprised. <laughs> they own ABC. No, what company owns ABC? It's another good example of horizontal integration. Disney? Disney. What else does Disney own besides ABC? ESPN. ESPN. They own theme parks, right? So thinking about um, horizontal is different buckets of types of products, horizontal integration. So those are two really good examples. Comcast also owns, for example, a wrestling um, a, a wrestling network. <laughs> I mean, so uh, it's really fascinating what the companies invest in. Uh, Comcast has, uh, as the cable provider, owns about 12% of the individual networks on their system. That is a different type of integration. That is actually called, instead of horizontal integration, vertical. And vertical integration is when you own the delivery system as well as the content, 
All right, so think about this. Comcast on its cable television service distributes NBC, right? So that's an example of that on, they are horizontally integrated and vertically integrated. So if a company, so if you think about Tootsie, it, it was distributed by Columbia Pictures back in 1982. Uh, the director of that film was, y'all just watched it, who directed that film? It was like, it was Sydney something, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, it was uh, Sydney Polak who, all, he directed the film, but he also was a producer part owner, right? So he not only got money from uh, the production, from the executive producer in um, being the director of the film, but he also then became a part owner of the film. And so as Columbia distributed the film for them, the, uh, he also made additional dollars for that. So it used to be that the distributors had all the power. If you would produce a film and you had to rely on distributors to pick it up and distribute it for you, and so this power differential between the creative people who create programming and the people who actually distribute it has always been a point of friction historically in the media. So just think about newspapers, right? Not everybody can, can have a story in a newspaper. You actually have to be selected by the editors to have your opinion. That would be the only way your public opinion put into a newspaper. So distributors have all, um, historically had all the power. And Comcast uh, is, is considerably powerful in that as your cable television provider, most communities in America don't have choice there. Usually there's only one cable television provider that comes to the home. And so Comcast, if you think about Charter, many of you may have Spectrum um, cable, uh, if you think about DISH and DirecTV, these distributors have had a lot of power historically um, and command a lot of wealth. Uh, and their decision on what to carry and what not to carry make or break a film or a TV show or a cable television network. Um, so that is the vertical integration and horizontal integration. And Companies today, uh, why do you think a company would want to vertically integrate? Why would you do that? It can drive down like the prices that um, certain networks have to pay for the content. Absolutely. So it, it controls the, the cost, right? It controls profitability. Have you ever gotten frustrated that one company controls a lot? Um, yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, I will say, who, who answered that why? Who was that, Naima? Uh, it was me, Ben. Ben. Uh, ben, that was a good answer because normally, and this is something true in the media, whenever you ask why a company is doing something, it is always about the money. Yeah. You just have to figure out how they're making it. You may have to backtrack, but the answer is always why to that why question is to make money. And sometimes it takes a while to figure out exactly how they're making the money. Uh, but it, the answer is always that it's profitable. Um, so I just asked, have you ever felt like some entity, some company owns too much of what you're you're dealing with, right? Like too many services, or you turn around and, and now they control this too. Uh, what companies right now in the United States are um, heavily vertically and horizontally integrated? Amazon. Amazon. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was to say yeah. Disney is probably another one. Yes, right, they own those probably, characters. and Probably Apple. Apple, yes, 
right? So Apple Plus, another example of um, more why. And so why does a company do that? Why do they become vertically in order to make money? So the danger can happen is when companies become too vertically and horizontally integrated that Americans typically do not like it. So what company has recently faced a lot of criticism about their power and not making the American people aware of the usage of that? China. Facebook? Yes, Facebook. Who said, was that Charles? That was Peter. Peter, Facebook, oh, yeah. all right. So that image of Mark uh, Zuckerberg in front of Congress testifying is an image that uh, really is the culmination of the American people, you know, saying, hey, maybe this company has too much power. And uh, I predict that you, you left off one company in your series about who might be uh, collecting a lot of that power. You said Amazon, Apple, Facebook. Who else has a lot of power? Disney. Disney. That was a good one, too, but they're still the biggest one you're missing. Google. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so Google. I would say, actually, Amazon and Google are probably a race neck and neck but they are referred to as the masters of vertical and horizontal integration. And as they, if you think about uh, revenue, the only way they can increase their revenue is to become more horizontally and vertically integrated. So it was no accident that Google decided to buy YouTube several years ago because they wanted, they wanted that data there. You know, Google's a data company. They sell that's, primarily the business they're in are metrics, right? And so uh, that's their, their link. But an example, just as a closing thought is, when I say America doesn't like it, what ends up happening is they bring forward legislation to force companies to, um, to um, uh, break up. AT&T went through this in the 80s. Um, AT&T controlled you literally could not own a telephone. They, you leased it from the phone company. So I have memories of going down to the telephone store with my mom to rent, to get a telephone to rent, <laughs> right? So, that, so it used to be everybody did that. And the only long distance company was AT&T. And so there was a huge uh, Supreme Court case and an, an antitrust case that broke up AT&T. Um, and then we had our regional bell companies from that, so Southern Bell. So the, the American people don't like it. And I've included in my notes for you all, I gave them to Dr. Clark for the class, um, an example of a Supreme Court ruling that um, really set the pace for all of this. And that was a 1948 ruling that forced the film industry to, um, to break up, to basically um, get out of the business of being vertically integrated. It used to be that movie companies owned the theaters and they also owned the actors. So, you, so the actors all worked for Columbia Pictures. They made movies that were shown in Columbia theaters. Uh, and the, eventually people got frustrated that the price gouging and the uh, content wasn't as diverse as they wanted, and it forced the, the United States Supreme Court in 1948 forced the di divestment of five major movie houses, including Columbia was one of them. And here's one little final fact, a little takeaway for you. If you, re if you remember when you were watching Tootsie and you saw the Columbia, the woman draped, uh, and she kind of looks like the Statue of Liberty. You're not quite sure. Uh, Columbia is the feminine for Christopher Columbus. And so that Columbia uh, icon in Columbia University is a feminine version. She's draped in a white cloth and she represents America. Uh, so uh, it is uh, 
uh, a tribute to the freedom of America. So uh, Columbia University is named uh, for her as well as Columbia, uh, the movie uh, company, the film distributor. So, uh, so that's my little fact for the day. Thank you so much, President. But do you all have any questions? <laughs> I see you all applauding. This, I know that this is a lot of information and there, oh, now it looks like you've got a question. Uh, uh, President Book, I just wanted to know your favorite movie. I'm just very curious. <laughs> you know, uh, what movie do I sit down and watch over and over again? I like uh, Nicolas Cage and The Family Man. <laughs> I like, um, uh, uh, you know, I watch the classics, so uh, I do, um, uh, I like Mansfield Park, I like Emma, I'm excited that there's this new Emma out, I plan to watch it during my sequester. <laughs> um, so I, I have, uh, my, my kids usually tell me, I'm watching right now an Australian show called A Place Called Home on Acorn TV. <laughs> I'm watching it too, I'm watching it too. I wish it was a, a little more. I liked Little Women that just came out, the Greta Gerwig version um, that just was in the theaters. I like all the Little Women. Um, so yeah, thank you, thank you. Just, oh, you have Emma, um, well, I have two actually. My first one is: Do you think like your background in comm has helped you like be the president of a school? Absolutely. I use it every day. As a matter of fact, Dr. Clark sent me an email because she noticed I had written my subject line like a headline. So I work <laughs> in television news. And, yeah. uh, and so just the writing skills and understanding yeah. how technology works, basically, so that you can use it more effectively, that really is, is something I notice um, mm -hmm. that some of my other presidential counterparts you know, can't do as easily. Uh, so I'm grateful to know the tools too. And then my second question, do you think there's still a good chance we might come back to school? <laughs> yes. I wish this was over for all of us. I have to tell you, I, uh, but you know, we're, we're watching this very closely and our goal is that uh, we'll see if the world lets that happen. Right? <laughs> Thank you. Well, the most important thing is everybody stay healthy right now. And uh, I do think it's good that you're not in the middle of watching the news all the time right now. Yeah. Uh, I would really check in once or twice a day, but really you don't need to be in the middle of this uh, media storm that's happening. And it's really hard to know what is uh, the most credible sources. So um, I, I'm sensitive to that. So uh, yeah. Yeah, so you're, be healthy and limit your uh, news consumption right now to just a couple times a day. <laughs> Grace, it looks like you have a, had a question. Take yourself off mute and you can ask it. <clears throat> I just had a question. Um, so after like the companies get put in front of Congress or the Supreme Court and get forced to be broken down, how much of a loss is that? I mean, because people still use Facebook today, obviously, but like, did they lose it? so much money or how much of a loss is that? So I will say that there are advantages. You'll see in my notes that there are some advantages to vertical and horizontal integration because that accumulation of wealth allows those companies to do really great research and development, for example. So, you know, Google has invested, um, I'm sure, hundreds of millions of dollars in this research on self-driving cars. Right, which I think would be good for America. So there are some advantages to accumulation of wealth. It allows progress. It allows for quality of life for employees that work for those companies. Uh, so I, I don't wanna paint it all negative um, because I do think it's a balance. Uh, I will say that AT&T, obviously we broke them up and they are no longer the company that they were. Like we, they literally were not able to, to make the level of wealth in this new environment. Um, but because they didn't command all the wealth, it gave the opportunity for startups to occur. Um, think about, so once um, the technology existed, we now have several industries which we refer to as OTT, over the top industries. And those are companies who can jump over Comcast, who can jump over Columbia and launch their own content. 
So for example, Netflix is an over the top. That is because of the internet and because of broadband, you could literally, you can literally not subscribe to cable TV anymore. Use Netflix and Hulu and these other over the top services and bypass them. That's great. But here's the challenge is Netflix has probably reached, I, I haven't looked at the data re recently, but I'd say they're probably in 70% of television homes. So how will Netflix make additional revenue? Where else can Netflix make money? What are they gonna do? Because every company's goal is to grow. So how will Netflix make money? Well, part of what they've done is they've started doing a lot more like original shows, yeah. but it's also costing them an obscene amount of money because they're getting all these big name stars and then they're spending more money on the stars and not increasing enough revenue, especially with like Marvel movies getting pulled off because they're all going to Disney Plus. And then like Friends is getting pulled off soon. Um, I think The Office is getting pulled off soon. Yeah. So, okay. so they're losing all their best shows. <laughs> is it Genevieve? Genevieve. Genevieve. That is a great observation, right? Because Netflix is, they are becoming vertically integrated in order to make more money. So they are investing in their own content, right? They're gonna produce those. Uh, then, mark my words, they will take those new shows and sell them to other people to make money, right? So they are becoming, um, they're not only the provider of the show, they're going to be the producer of the show, right? And they are gonna become increasingly vertically integrated. It's a little like Amazon. Suddenly we have Amazon Music, Prime, Amazon Prime. Uh, I'm sure there's an Amazon television network out there that I'm not aware of, right? That, so, um, so the only way they can grow is to become more vertically integrated and you'll see that happen. Good question. Morgan, did you have a question? You're muted, Morgan. It got answered, we're all good. Okay. Well, it has, it's been great to be with all of you. So uh, enjoyed it. It's fun. Thanks for letting me teach virtually for a few minutes. I enjoyed it. Thanks, everybody.